Uh, which, actually, yeah. which, which actually gets me to, to the next question that I have for you. Uh, if we are to look at it, um, if we are to look at it primarily from the point at which you start to, 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 you start to base your article on, that is to say the Cold War. Uh, during the Cold War, both the superpowers, uh, the United States and Russia, uh, they both indirectly and directly sponsored uh, wars and uh, political coups in some parts of Africa for different political and economic interests. And a typical example that we can cite uh, in this discussion uh, is that of the role that uh, the United States played in the toppling of Patrice Lumumba in the Democratic Republic of Congo uh, in the 1960s and then was then later on replaced by the quote-unquote generals uh, getting to the point at which we had Mobutu Seseko. Um, so in other words, what I'm just simply saying is that both the United States and Russia played some part directly or indirectly in, 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 in this so-called proxy wars in Africa to defend certain political and economic interests. Which gets me to the question that what is it, what is it that was so significant about Africa? What was the central significance of Africa during the Cold War that brought the attention of these superpowers uh, to the continent? It's a, it's a good question. And, and of course, I, I must add, uh, I am not a historian of the Cold War. So there are other people who can answer question, that question better than me. But, but it's, it's, it's crucial to recall, right? And, and uh, Mobutu is a good example here, that the African countries came to independence almost at the same time as the Cold War was building up, right? So what do African independent countries mean in the Cold War? I mean, in part, the Cold War was uh, a clash of ideas, a clash of ideologies, and a fight for, for allies, right? And what uh, the West or the United States in the case, in, in particularly in the case of uh, Sayer, but not only, what they were worried about was that if Mobutu fell, communism would take hold in one country after another. So the kind of uh, domino theory, right? That you will lose one country, then you will lose another one, and the whole world will gradually turn towards communism. So that was one fear. I think also another aspect of it is, I uh, shouldn't forget that the African countries as they became independent, represented uh, votes in the United Nations. And the General Assembly was by now one country, one vote. So if you want to have influence uh, through the UN geopolitically, you, you want to make friends on, on the African continent, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and then there are a whole lot of other issues uh, to do with uh, resources, uh, access to those resources. But, but the Cold War was a particular moment in time in this sense. But I think to come back to the, the topic of, of uh, militarism, the Cold War was, as you said, in many ways, in some parts of Africa, a hot war, right? There were proxy wars. There were wars that were being fought on the African continent uh, through uh, proxy armies of, of, of communism and, and capitalism and freedom, as it was called then. And that's a very important part of that history and that period. But still, at the same time, overall, the fear of a superpower conflict between the East and the West of another nuclear disaster meant that the focus was very much on keeping the continent stable for better or for worse, even if it meant keeping uh, certain dictators in power. Uh, that stability was was kind of uh, the overarching objective uh, during that period, and, and that's sort of one of the key aspects of of uh, of the articles focus on on the changes in militarism. 